Starbase will not be the exclusive place to launch Starships forever. Well, in reality, SpaceX has been wanting to launch Starship from its smaller rocket launch facility in Florida for a while. However, the launch site owner, NASA, has restricted this, fearing that Starship would cause trouble with Crew Dragon launches, on which they rely solely to reach the ISS. To prove that NASA's worries are redundant, SpaceX promptly provided an alternative solution for Crew Dragon by constructing a brand new launch pad for it. Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. If you're new to exploring the Starship program, it's crucial to understand that Starbase is not initially intended as the launch site for SpaceX's Starship. Instead, it primarily functions as a facility for the production and testing of advanced Starship technologies. To be honest, Elon Musk, the head of SpaceX, always has the ultimate goal of launching Starship missions from Launch Complex 39A, LC-39A in Florida, possibly from a new pad that is yet to be established. In 2022, significant progress has been made towards this objective, notably with the nearly completed Starship launch tower next to the Falcon 9 mount at LC-39A. Following concerns arising from the mishap during the first Starship flight, most Starship operations at Florida's facility have been temporarily halted. Why is that? Currently, LC-39A stands as the sole U.S. site with the capability to launch crewed Dragon capsules. This is the only spacecraft currently available to transport astronauts to the ISS. That makes the launch pad a national asset rather than solely for experimental flights. If a Starship were to experience an incident at LC-39A, NASA could lose its only access point to the International Space Station. When a Falcon 9 rocket exploded at LC-40 back in 2016, causing extensive damage that required a complete rebuild, SpaceX took 15 months to revive the launch pad. In other words, if a Starship launch fails and destroys the Falcon and Dragon facilities at Pad 39A at some point, within 12 to 18 months. In fact, another spacecraft that NASA chose to replace Dragon, Boeing Starliner, is many years behind schedule and is still not qualified to launch humans. Therefore, they have no hope of taking over the supply duties for the ISS. Given this high-stakes scenario, it becomes imperative to conduct rigorous testing and explore alternative launch options for crewed flights before Starship can be cleared for launches from Florida. That's why SpaceX is actively addressing this concern and working on viable alternatives. To the southwest of Space Launch Complex 40 is SpaceX's Roberts Road facility, housing SpaceX's Falcon 9 refurbishment facility Hangar X and the Cape Canaveral Star Factory. An access tower is rising for SpaceX crew and cargo Dragon missions. The third section of the structure is now in place. Once the tower is complete, it'll relieve a bottleneck at Pad 39A, which is currently the only pad equipped for Dragon launches. With numerous cranes and elevators surrounding these sections, the elevator shaft and stairs can be seen in the smaller sections at the back, and with the larger front section expected to house the crew access elevator. On launch day, the crew typically arrives at the launch pad and rides a special elevator, known as the crew access arm, to board the spacecraft, whether it's a Dragon spacecraft or another type of spacecraft. The crew access arm is a retractable walkway that extends from the launch tower to the spacecraft, allowing the crew to safely board the vehicle. The construction of an additional tower for Crew Dragon emphasizes SpaceX's dedication to establishing a strong and secure pathway for crewed missions, thereby minimizing risks to critical ISS access points. This also implies, as the crew elevator nears completion, SpaceX is likely to have a tendency to launch Starship in the near future. NASA will no longer have concerns about potential issues related to a giant new experimental rocket. Starship could potentially halt all SpaceX Dragon launches in one fell swoop, was apparently one bridge too many for the agency. From all these developments, we can anticipate the revival of activities related to Starship at the Florida site in the near future. Furthermore, another sign indicates significant progress as SpaceX is gradually expanding its operational area. A recently published environmental assessment draft for the expansion of Roberts Road. Most notably, in the 231-page document is the primary proposal aiming for a northward expansion of the current facility, requiring the acquisition of 100 additional acres of land from SpaceX. SpaceX has proposed a massive expansion plan for its current facility, which would triple its size to nearly 150 acres, an enormous area. 
The expansion plan outlines the construction of two buildings, a smaller structure likely designated for office space and a considerably larger one, potentially serving as a second star factory. The proposed expansion is designed for swift completion, possibly within two to three years. To facilitate this expansion, most utility services, electrical, fiber, and water connections could be extended from the existing Roberts Road facility. The proposal also includes a request to widen the Saturn Causeway, the road connecting the iconic vehicle assembly building with pad LC39A. Currently, this road is 8 meters wide, which, though spacious, poses a challenge for maneuvering starships as they're 9 meters wide. SpaceX aims to expand the road to 10.3 meters, providing some wiggle room for the SPM transporters. In the event that the primary expansion site's not approved, an alternative southern expansion option is on the table, the backup plan. This would require 115 acres of land and bring the facility close to transmission lines, heightening concerns given the towering height of a starship, 50 meters for the starship's second stage. The drawback of this site lies in the need for new transformers and laying out tens of thousands of gas lines to compensate for the lack of existing utilities, resulting in additional work and time. The expansion will also result in the impact of up to 68.2 acres of wetlands and surface waters. Although these impacts are considered moderate, they only represent a small percentage of wetlands at the Kennedy Space Center and Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. The study also states that the project will have a negligible impact on the Florida scrub jay, a threatened species. The loss of scrub jay habitat will be offset by creating other scrub habitats. Importantly, from an environmental standpoint, the document doesn't raise any significant concerns, which is a positive aspect. So, when will Starship take off from Florida? In our prediction, SpaceX could potentially launch Starship by the end of 2024, or possibly even sooner. What are your thoughts? Share your opinions in the comments section down below. Alongside the good news of SpaceX expanding its footprint in Florida, they also have plans to build a Starship production facility along with their Hangar X. Regardless, the important thing is that Florida has been chosen as the primary launch site for Starship in the future. Therefore, significant developments in this location are undoubtedly essential, whether they happen sooner or later. Elon Musk also confirmed this during a gathering at Starbase. In response to a reporter's question about SpaceX's plans to establish a new launch site at the Kennedy Space Center, Musk said, The future role of Starbase, I think it's well suited to be our advanced R&D location. So, it's like where we will try out our designs and new versions of the rocket, and I think probably Kennedy will be our sort of main operational launch site. Not only that, but the Boca Chica location also presents SpaceX with overlapping challenges. Not everyone is thrilled to have the region be relegated as the preferred location of fiery crashes. Therefore, environmental issues around Starbase are always a concern that government agencies target. This leads to lawsuits from environmental agencies, and the process of obtaining launch permits at this facility is also cumbersome and complex, causing delays in launches that could impact important space missions. The development of SpaceX in Florida is steadily progressing. This is an exciting time as we observe their activities unfolding in the future. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.